And just remember that everything has a season, everyone has seasons, and this is part of the process of becoming. This is the Bold Artist Podcast. You have answers and you're expressing them in your art. Your art is important and it needs to be seen. Welcome, and let's get started with today's episode. Hey, Sharla. So we're here having a little chat, going down another art rabbit hole. (laughs) We tend to do that, don't we? (laughs) We do all the time. (laughs) Yes, we have a lot of rabbit holes that we explore. Uh, You know, we're producing this Bold Artist podcast, and often there's a lot of rabbit holes that we go down, little trails that we go down talking about art and previous episodes, and we just you know, have a lot of deep thoughts and deep conversations that sometimes is nice to include our listeners and watchers in on. Well, it's, I think it's why we knew this was going to happen. Like why we decided to do the podcast. Cause when we are together, no matter if we're talking about <laughs> life or art or work or whatever, we go down these rabbit holes of deep art talks mm-hmm. and they're always really good. So why not record them so we can refer back and maybe some people out there that are listening can glean something from them as well and even join in the conversation that's what ultimately i'd love to see is a way for you guys to join in the conversation and in the comments or send in your thoughts or questions and we can talk about them later but yeah, yeah let's share our thoughts yeah absolutely and that is actually one of the main reasons we started the instagram at boldars podcast was we we had started it to use as a portal of information so we got off to a great start i think that the launch of this podcast went even better than either of us expected. We started having downloads and listens before we even made the public (laughs) announcement, (laughs) which was super exciting, but also a little alarming and made us bump up the release date or let's say the launch date a week sooner, which put me into like fast gear, (laughs) getting a bunch done. Uh, And then, and then now, Um, we've seen just the response and that the Bold Artist Podcast is meeting a need, um, meeting the need of conversation for artists, giving artists voices. And we've seen it so warmly welcomed and received by artists. Mm -hmm. And so thank you everyone for tuning in, subscribing, following, and being part of that. Now in the pilot, Charla and I shared our dreams and our vision of the podcast, and we mentioned that this is a work in progress, something that's going to evolve, and we were and are excited to have you all part of the evolution, part of you're you're going to get to witness how this grows and changes with time. And in that pilot, I shared a little of my personal story of how I became a podcast host. And I mentioned a lot of years of feeling that my voice was silenced. And then Sharla, you and I got talking about how that isn't necessarily a negative thing. And that's something that I I thought we could just talk about today is how I believe artists always do go through times of silence, at times where we feel that we're on the shelf, so to speak. I have always um, likened that stage of life to being like a butterfly in the chrysalis, a time of development. And even though I shared in the pilot that, you know, my voice felt silence for a lot of years and this has been a full circle awakening for me to be back in the studio. I look at those years of feeling silenced as not necessarily negative. It was a time of development and it was a special time. (laughs) One where though I was probably bursting to use my voice again, I think we need to go through times of silence. And I know that really, when I shared that with you, it really resonated with you as well. Yeah, it does. And I think a lot of people that, message me in the in bold school when they're taking my classes they say the same types of story that you're saying that they felt like they had to lay their brush down and do something else 
-hmm. and not necessarily because they wanted to that they felt forced to or they felt like there was no other option or if they didn't they would be ridiculed or you know it's a typical art story that art isn't important or art is not going to make you money you're going to be hungry if you become an artist that type of a story so in in essence i guess you feel like you're being silenced by mm -hmm. either somebody else or you're just allowing that to happen to yourself so mm -hmm. i think it's a it's a part of probably every artist's story to mm -hmm. some degree at some point in their life and i've often wondered now that i am a working painter this is my career is what i do <laughs> um i've often wondered like wonder what would have happened if i had done this right out of university what if i had had the nerve or the the bravery or the courage or whatever it took to start right out of university what would have happened but um of course we can't look back we can't have those types of like regrets in our lives mm -hmm. but i think about like if i had done that right out of school where would i have ended up it probably would have been a very different road for me i was young and immature and i had no clue about life or what it would take and the world is a completely different world now than when i graduated a very long time ago so mm -hmm. i now look back at that journey from graduating with a bfa so bachelor of fine arts to it was uh almost 20 years later maybe between 15 and 20 years later that i took on art as my career fine art mm -hmm. career um you know in in that time i learned a lot i was definitely in incubation period for what was to be now in in a sense i i do feel like it was a preparation time mm -hmm. so i started looking back at that as a, a very different um, experience than i used to think i used to think i had been silenced or mm -hmm. um what is or, or that what i had done was just like a waste of time mm -hmm. you know i could have been doing this sooner but i mm -hmm. wouldn't be i wouldn't be this artist i wouldn't have had the photography experience mm -hmm. you know all of those types of things and when i was learning or preparing to start bold school and i was getting the course together and learning how to use all my gear you know in in those times those probably two to three years really before bold school launched i had all of these ideas in my mind and was putting them together and i was so impatient i wanted to do it right away i wanted it to happen now mm -hmm. and i'm still impatient in lots of ways but i had to learn i had to learn every step i had to learn the gear i had to practice you know i had to teach workshops in order to be able to teach online i needed to have that live experience to know what it was that people were going to ask and what the students needed there were so many things that i needed to do that i didn't even realize i needed to do and you almost you almost can't figure that out you can't plan it so mm -hmm. embracing the i like to say incubation i like how you mm -hmm. called it the mm -hmm. silence embracing that time and looking for what you can do in that time mm -hmm. because when you when you when you're done you know when that chrysalis opens up and you're flying like a butterfly mm -hmm. you got no time to do a lot of those things anymore mm -hmm. you got no time that's mm -hmm. good english that's <laughs> you're, so true. you're yeah like i there's so many things now that i wish that i was learning two years ago because i barely have time to like sit down and put in that that effort to learn those things now because i'm so busy which is a blessing and a great thing so mm -hmm. silence and incubation i think is is a very important uh, part of the journey to understand. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be 20 years long. <laughs> it, you know, it could maybe just be a couple of months, but yeah, yeah that's, that's, what I, that's how I look at when you were talking about your time of silence. That's what yes. I likened it to for my journey. Yes, and they say that silence mm -hmm. is powerful because when you do what we call hold the silence. So you're holding your silence. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time to speak, which I'm using metaphorically, <laughs> mm -hmm. but when it's time to speak, the word is the, the break of the silence is more powerful. And so that means silence is powerful. And I also like to think of silence, you, you called it incubation, which is a perfect description. I also like to think of it in through the eyes of being a potter where you put a piece on the shelf. And I actually did a talk. I know uh, in the pilot, we talked about how you met me while I was doing a how my life is like pottery talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's so many ways that my life and my heart are like a picture of the clay process in the master potter's hands. Mm -hmm. A part of that has been a whole piece of being on the shelf and when as a potter when i would put a piece of pottery freshly made on the shelf 
I often, just because I'm imaginative, I would think about how that piece feels. (laughs) (laughs) I made it, I spent so much time with it, and then I just put it there. And if that was a picture of my own life or heart, I would feel abandoned and just Mm -hmm. kind of left. And I think that's the stage we go through being like pottery on a shelf, which is just waiting for maturity. And when I began to look at it like that, like as a potter, when I would put a piece on the shelf, I had intentions for that piece. I would put it there in order for it to dry, which actually is a maturity process, and it would dry and it would become harder and stronger enough to fire. And you could never fire a piece of wet clay. It just, it would not work out. It would explode in the kiln or become a huge mess. You couldn't fire it. It has to dry. It has to mature. It simply has no other way to become anything, a a finished vessel. It has no other way except to sit on the shelf. That is the only passage to that kind of maturity. And just like we, we talked about the butterfly, the butterfly, there is no other way to get the wings. No other way. A time of silence, a time of chrysalis, time of incubation, whatever we want to call it, the time on the shelf. It's the only way. And so going back to what I said in the pilot, where I felt that my voice was silenced, it's true. And it did feel like perhaps negative, but it's not. It was mm-hmm. necessary, totally yeah. necessary. And and I'm saying so this good. now. Yeah, I'm saying this now <laughs> because as we encourage artists to take all the necessary steps to become wholehearted, you also mentioned before about being wholehearted artists. Mm-hmm. We want artists to be free and wholehearted. There are necessary steps. And part of that is stages of silence of feeling shelved of incubation where it's just you and bold school playing on video where you're learning and you're practicing skills in your studio all alone with no one you know praising you in galleries (laughs) (laughs) um it sometimes that's a season of silence where you're just learning other times the season of silence is where i i get the chance to speak to a lot of moms of young children who feel that their passions and careers are on hold and that's okay you and I both went through that yes we both went through times yes (laughs) yes where you know in your heart of hearts that you were made to create and made to create big (laughs) in Mm -hmm. big ways but that your first mission in that moment is to raise up your little ones and they take a lot of time a lot of nurturing and a lot of your energy and at the end of the day there really isn't much energy to learn skills and grow yourself as an artist that is a season and that is even what i would call as a season of silence which remember silence is powerful (laughs) and it's a season it would be a season where you feel that you're on the shelf or back burner and i think charla and i are here today to say that that's okay and that seasons don't last forever the seasons change and there's always going to be new the butterfly doesn't stay in the chrysalis forever the season is going to change Mm -hmm. and you can like in that season have intention like when Mm -hmm. it was during the my season of creating bold school what i would say was two to three years before the launch of it um it was hearing a talk kind of like this where I talked about it that made me stop and consider I have this moment I'm not doing everything I want to do I'm not living the dream or whatever the dream is but if I can create intention in this moment to do what's needed in this moment Mm -hmm. you know and then then it becomes important and intentional in your process and I look back at that now and I'm so grateful that I had time to read books and listen mm-hmm. to podcasts about about mm-hmm. people who had been through these things. I mean, I learned, I read uh, books about art and creativity mm-hmm. and I read self-help books just simply about how to become a wiser person and and business books about and creating good habits. You know, I re- I did all of those things in that season because I had time and I was able to process and put those things into practice before it got busy. And now I kind of feel like I'm living in almost another season of silence with my own artwork, which we were talking about this just over the weekend with mm-hmm. me about me 
in that I'm painting often for bold school and with our bold artists in mind what can I share what can I teach and I rarely put time in to paint on my own without the cameras on and it's a little bit of a struggle kind of figuring out what that means but in an, in a sense it's a little bit of a season where I'm I'm figuring out that transition and I'm I'm doing something in a different way but it doesn't have to always be this way you know with intention I can use it for good and I can transition into to another season mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. so I think we're probably always in some way working in a season of silence too really when you think about it in that yes. regard Yes, like one area of our life might be in that season yeah. while another is in yeah. a completely different season. And some yeah. of the listeners that are tuning in are in a different season than even what I described as that silence where you're maturing as an artist or a mom of young kids or any of those seasons. Perhaps they're in the season that you're in right now where their business is booming, they're busy artists, and there may be, this is just some food for thought, something in you that is in a silent season that it's time to rotate and bring that out and Mm -hmm. and that we always have to be in tune with what's going on in here and i love it that you're in tune when you texted me on the weekend and you shared a bit about where you were at with uh always having the cameras on and charla what you have done starting Bold School, I've called it generous because even though it's a business, there is a huge outpour of generosity when someone teaches what they have mastered. And it's not always simply to be in business. I mean, that's a big component, but there is, when someone teaches what they've mastered, there is uh, a component where you step into sharing your legacy. And it's not about just all your achievements. It's about sharing and continuing your legacy. And some don't realize that that's what teachers do, Uh, especially when they click purchase on a class, you know, that's online or something within bold school, they think, oh, it's just their business, but it's so much more than that. And I know that firsthand from being friends with Charlotte, it is the pouring out of legacy. And when you create a class, or a course that teaches what you've mastered and you had to break it down, like you step out of flow, you're no longer able to just flow in your art, you have to step out of that and break down the process into bite-sized pieces for students, beginners, people who know nothing about it to begin to learn from building block step one. (laughs) It is such, a difficult task for someone who's mastered something to break that all down. And you have done it beautifully, but you've also done it at times with so many cameras on you, sacrificing your special times of flow. And just so you all know, as Charlotte's friend, I'm always encouraging her (laughs) to paint for herself and to have those times of flow as well, because we hear that over and over again in all of these episodes, like the ones that we um, precede this podcast today artists have said over and over again paint what makes you happy paint for yourself paint because you want to bring that out of you and Mm -hmm. and so that goes for Sharla as well but there's seasons and we have to be in tune with these different seasons yeah so I guess in that sense I'm in this place of trying to figure out that season Mm -hmm. really like Mm -hmm. in a moment of being vulnerable right now Mm -hmm. a few months ago I painted a piece I'd kind of known that this was happening that I was always painting for our bold artists and I hadn't I was sort of feeling like my work wasn't changing or growing and what am I going to have to offer if I'm not growing and Um, So I turned the cameras off and I'm like, I'm just going to go paint and see what comes out so I can enter flow and I can just go into the zone and and see what happens. And sure enough, I painted a piece I was really excited about and I loved and it felt really good. And then my first thought was, I didn't record it. (laughs) No one's going to be able to see what I just did, including Mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to be able to go back and watch that process of what I just did. Mm -hmm. So it's it's an interesting play back and forth, I Mm -hmm. guess of what's happening. I don't want to turn the cameras off because I want to be able to share it, but Mm -hmm. I'm missing my own growth and my own flow and all of those experiences. Mm -hmm. So I think, Mary Janelle, what you told me over the weekend really resonated and I have to 
figure out how to turn the cameras off and not not feel kind of I don't know what the word is not guilt but a little bit of guilt because I do want to share I'm not sure what the word is not maybe guilt. obligated would the word be obligated no it's it's a positive word like I want now I want to be able to share like that used to be terrifying mm -hmm. for the world to be able to mm -hmm. look at me or somebody to watch me mm -hmm. paint it used to be terrifying mm -hmm. I still is I still don't want to mess up in front of the camera but <laughs> I, you know, I, I love our community and I'm like, look what I just did. I want to share it with you, mm -hmm. which is fine. I can still share the final piece, but I want to share the process. I don't, I don't know what the word is. I Maybe one of our listeners it. will know what the word is. And <laughs> yeah. they'll, they'll put it on our at Bold Artist Podcast Instagram <laughs> yeah. portal because that's all about communication. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please tell um, us what that word is. Yeah. So it's, it's that go between. Like I, I need to, I need to come to a place where I'm okay with painting something and mm -hmm. nobody being able to see me do it, and mm -hmm. then I need to be okay with painting for the cameras and it not being. A masterpiece every mm -hmm. single time because I'm teaching and there's a little bit of sacrifice in in the outcome when I'm mm -hmm. teaching so for me in my space right now this is kind of where um, my what I'm incubating I guess you could say I'm incubating mm -hmm. this so mm -hmm. by the time I come out of the chrysalis of whatever this is that I'm learning um, I'm gonna be a better teacher mm -hmm. and a better artist at the same time so mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. worth, I guess, in a sense, the the, the silence because it, it does kind of feel like a silencing because mm -hmm. I'm not able to be the best teacher I want to be and I'm not mm -hmm. able to be the best artist I want to be. So I do feel silenced, but it's not a silencing. It's actually growth mm -hmm. and I'm actually coming through something up through something that I've been in for a few years mm -hmm. and now I'm I'm. I always like to say leveling up. So mm -hmm. I think that I guess I'm just figuring this all out while we're talking on a podcast mm -hmm. that we're going to share with the world. Mm -hmm. I'm figuring out that season that I'm in right now. I love it. Cool. I love it that you're vulnerable enough to share it and, <laughs> and let us all witness you figuring it out. And I'm thinking about like when you talked about that season that and doing it with intention, being intentional within the season uh, mm -hmm. and how it's almost like it's like a dam that's going to break. And we did a, my husband and I did a road trip last week and we were driving past a dam and I hadn't really given it much thought of like the purpose of a dam or how they get so full and then they, they let it loose and it all rushes out. And you know, that season of silence can be like that filling up of that reservoir where it's yes. so full and you feel the pressure. And I think that's you right now. You're feeling that pressure <laughs> yeah. where you're like, I need time, like concentrated time in my flow as an artist, almost like in the secret place mm -hmm. in order to bring out that new um, work to bold school. And, and it's like the filling up of the dam and it's going to let loose and I can't wait to see what it is. <laughs> it's so exciting. I love, I have loved watching you. I wouldn't even call them pivot, but they're things that you have changed through the years in your art and even how you added embroidery. Um, that's a whole topic that we've never even covered in mm -hmm. a podcast, but you not only do these bold color, masterful portraits, but you add an element of embroidery, which is something that is very rare. Like, I don't know that I've met or seen another artist doing what you're doing. And if you don't know what I'm referring to, do go on to charla.ca and take a look at Charlotte's portfolio in closer detail because you show close up pictures of the embroidery that you do on canvas. But Sharla, even that, the time and the patience and the artistry it took to develop that into your work is something totally new. And I know it came out of a secret place of silence like something like that it doesn't was, just, yeah. just yeah so tell us a little about that yeah like i i went i had to go in back into incubation <laughs> there's gotta be another word for it because <laughs> only one a caterpillar only ever becomes a butterfly once but <laughs> i don't know what goes back in and there's a metamorphosis all the time but i i remember that process without usually i go into that space without even realizing i'm going into it you only kind of realize you're in there about halfway through and then you realize if you break out of it something Something's going to be broken. Mm -hmm. um, so you got to run with it in that moment, um, which I guess is a lot about risk and courage and bravery that we always mm -hmm. like to talk about. Mm -hmm. But I just uh, wanted to explore embroidery. I started seeing something on, I started seeing embroidery artists come up on my Instagram feed. I don't know why. I didn't research it. I didn't look up. I didn't look it up. They just came. 
And something about it, just old fashioned embroidery, just spoke to my soul. It was like mm-hmm. a chocolate mm-hmm. cake. You know, I just wanted to eat it. <laughs> yeah. And I used to like like it and bookmark it. And then I started searching for more. I'm like, why do I like this? Mm-hmm. And then um, I, I was like, I'm not going to become, I'm not going to do embroidery. My husband's going to kill me. Like, he already thinks I'm crazy because <laughs> I'm painting. I'm wondering, you know, where's this going? Because it was quite a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm going to do embroidery. But I couldn't find a good reason to. It was so time consuming. It wasn't expensive, but it's a time consuming art form. And what in the world am I going to do with embroidery? Like, is this even an art? So I was researching it and finding some incredible embroidery artists, especially for some reason, I think a lot of the ones I would find would be in Asia, like Singapore and Beijing. I couldn't even understand what they were writing, but their work's just incredible. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I was so inspired and it was right before Christmas. So I got this idea that I could uh, reasonably go out, buy all of the stuff and make like Christmas gifts or Christmas ornaments or whatever, because you can do whatever you want at Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. So I went out and I got all the gear and me and my kids started embroidering Christmas ornaments and I I just had so much fun. I just absolutely Mm -hmm. loved it. I started learning 3D embroidery and adding beads to it. Mm -hmm. And um, once I started to actually do the art form, and go into a place of flow and inspiration, um, things started bubbling up, ideas started bubbling up. And I started thinking, you know, I'm holding a canvas in my hand and embroidering into it. Why can't I embroider onto my painting canvases? Mm -hmm. And I was too scared to do it. So Mm -hmm. I started Googling, what do people do with embroidery? And I found some really amazing things, but I found not one person who embroidered onto a painting. I just, I tried every which way and I researched for months and could not find it. I found people who embroidered onto photography, um, embroidered into clothing, and some people would put color onto their clothing or embroider over top of like a printed photo or something like that. But I didn't find anything where they were doing it with acrylic. And I just thought, I'm just going to do it myself. I'm just going to do it. Mm -hmm. So I found an old painting that I wasn't in love with. And I thought, well, if I ruin this one, it's not a big deal. So I grabbed my needle and thread and I put some thread in, punctured the canvas and put some thread on it. And that was the beginning of everything. Mm -hmm. So it became a, a definite period of incubation because I had to kind of go down into this place and I didn't tell anybody what I was doing except my kids and my mom was watching me and I just explored I guess Mm -hmm. and even when I put it onto canvas I didn't post about it I didn't share it with friends nothing until I kind of had something more solid in mind of how I was going to present this work so it was definitely a period of of learning and growth and and silence and Mm -hmm. incubation but it was uh, for lack of better words, it was beautiful and mm-hmm. freeing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there was no expectation from anybody and it didn't matter what I did. You know, now uh, when I'm embroidering, I'm like, okay, this is a big canvas this is a big piece of work. I'm going to present this. People are expecting it. Now there's more pressure behind it. But in that time, it was just a, a beautiful experience of mm-hmm. learning and exploring and growth. And that was great. And it's kind of nice to look forward to in the future, kind of doing that again. But right now I'm not doing that at all. I love hearing that story. I, I mean, as your friend, I've seen Mm -hmm. that, like you said, you didn't tell anyone what you were doing. So the thread on your canvases began to pop up in your new pieces, but I never heard the full story of, you know, you and I talked about it, but never in that whole you know, fullness of the story. So it's, it's really neat to hear and how it came out of that place of silence. It came out of that desire to explore Mm -hmm. and find something new. And also what intrigues me about it is how we first get the spark of an idea, like on your Instagram feed up pops these ideas and there's something sparked in you. And I've always been one in my, in my own art forms to really try to pay attention to that spark that Mm -hmm. that thing that turns my head that I go oh I'd like to try that or I'm interested in that or that texture you know just thinking it probably caught your attention the texture of the of the thread the colors of the thread the silkiness like who knows who knows what actually 
sparked you, but Mm -hmm. you paid attention to that. And then you followed it like a bunny on a trail. (laughs) Yeah. You just followed all of the, the leads that that was was, you. It was a bunny actually. The very first one was a little, (laughs) little tiny bunny with flowers all around. It was so old fashioned. (laughs) Yeah. But you also have to be careful because that happens every day. I see mm-hmm. stuff that just sparks I my. And I, I you know, know you yeah, know. I know. We you were talking. To, we were. You. We were talking just before we hit record this morning. We were talking about the distractions because yeah. uh, when Charla and I communicate, it often sounds like you know good, intelligent talking. And oh, there's a pigeon outside. I've never seen a pigeon at my house before. <laughs> It may have happened yesterday. <laughs> that may have happened a few times. And there was some other bird outside your window or a spider. There was a spider. <laughs> there and, was so, a spider. <laughs> and so it's, it was a woodpecker yesterday. The oh, a woodpecker. Yes. <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, it's, it's that we get easily distracted with our creative minds. And I do have, you know, and that's the thing about these uh, social media feeds popping up things that they think you're you're going to find interesting because you do find them interesting yeah. and then it sends you down that bunny trail. I, I try to really uh, <laughs> stay the course, put the blinders on and do what I'm yeah. doing. But the well, sparks, the sparks are important to, to pay attention to. They are like for a year or two years, I've been kind of secretly obsessed with aerial views of the land. Mm-hmm. I don't know what this mm-hmm. means. And I've not really even talked about it with anybody before. I don't know what this podcast is doing to me. But I've been really obsessed with them, especially there's embroidery artists who embroider landscapes from an aerial view. I'm hitting my mic. Mm. Um, And I just, I I love them. So I'm bookmarking these and I'm looking Mm. at them all the time. I have, I've sort of played around with a few ideas, but it's not come to anything in my art. So what I've done um, is just, it's, it's not, I don't haven't laid them aside. I haven't laid that aside. I follow it. And every once in a while, if I want to be inspired, I literally go and look at aerial photography and to just see some incredible, beautiful, it's very abstract, very colorful. And I bookmark some stuff and I think about what I might do with it. But I, and it's probably been about two years that I've been obsessed with this. And I'm, I'm waiting for that breakthrough moment where I, I know what I'm going to do with it or I know what it means for me. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing in my artwork. Um, I, I right now currently have no clue what that means, but I know that it's something that I've had a spark with for mm-hmm. a long time. So I know that it's, it's important. It's not just a whim because I love just about every piece of art that comes across my feed, but this is something that always gets my attention. So it's a good um, example of like a beginning of something and and the patience and giving it the space and the time that it needs it's not bubbling and breaking forth yet it's still just Mm -hmm. kind of sitting down there and ruminating i guess Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe one day it'll all come out and it'll all make sense and it'll seem easy but i think that's just an example of where a beginning could be and not to necessarily rush and and grab that and do something with it before it's really time because there's yeah. other things you probably could be doing right now instead that are more important in your process. Yeah, I love how you talked about it ruminating. And I think in my life, when people see me step into something new and fresh, cause I have had a lot of pivots, a lot of changes in my art and uh, through the years, like not just in short mm-hmm. periods of times, but over the years, people will say, well, well, when did that happen? Or when did you become a podcaster? And <laughs> it's hard to explain to them, well, these things have been going on for years, but they're just not public. Yeah, <laughs> they're yeah. just brewing, on, ruminating on the inside. Yeah. And, and that is a really important part of the creative process that I think people overlook. They yeah. don't, they don't um, take into much account all that's stirring on their inside and where that will eventually lead when the time is right, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. And this just got me thinking that it's like I need to text Ryan like, hey, Ryan, Charlotte needs a drone for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I have come so close to buying a drone so many times. Yeah. But I have not done it yet. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, maybe you never know. I'll just wait for the holiday. <laughs> um, but that would be perfect for you if you're obsessed with aerial views. Uh, so, yeah, no, definitely we have to pay attention to those sparks because as artists it's important for us to be pulling and drawing on those inspirations even if we're just funneling it into our current 
art form, you know, your, yeah, your yeah. current mastered skill or the skill that you're mastering. Mm-hmm. Even if you can draw those inspirations in somehow, just like you demonstrated in beginning to do embroidery on your acrylic pieces, mm-hmm. that's a perfect example of how it doesn't have to take us down completely different rabbit trails <laughs> uh, yeah. to completely different art forms like Mary Janelle does sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but we could try to figure out how to make it work for what we're currently mastering. When I've spoken before about that balance we need between practicing what we're mastering and play. So practice and play, practice and play. It's like a balance. Mm-hmm. That play is anything that sparks us. And we bring in that spark into our play, we experiment, and then what happens is you end up with something that takes your art, your mastered art, to a whole other level, like Charlotte's embroidery. It's something so rare, not a lot of artists are doing it. And watch, you're gonna have requests. <laughs> you might you might need to have a new bold school course. <laughs> well, there's some people in our community have been putting embroidery in their art now. Oh, there you go. So because it started. They, yeah, they follow you. So you, you'll have to launch that course. So we'll have to see if <laughs> what happens after this podcast. But anyway, just encouragement that whatever sparks your interest, And even if it's not physically possible to fully carry out the bigness of what you would love, you can start it in ways, in small ways, begin to apply it into what you're working in now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, And just remember that everything has a season, everyone has seasons, and this is part of the process of becoming. We have our times on the shelves, our time of incubation, as Charlotte calls it. And so we're excited here at the Bold Artist Podcast to see you through not just the season of this podcast, (laughs) but the seasons of your life as an artist and to share Mm -hmm. our seasons of artistry has been a privilege. So thank you everyone. Yes. Thank you for joining us today. Charlotte, any closing words? Yeah, I'm just going to close with saying that I always say when all else fails, um, I'll just do it when I'm retired, when I'm 80. Because most people say, well, I'm going to paint when I'm retired. Like, what am I going to do when I retire? I'm painting as my career. So I'm going to sculpt when I retire. I'm going to quilt when I retire. All those things that I really wish I had time to do. So when all else fails, it might seem a little bit far away in the future, but it will come. So I'll just do it when I retire. Yes. Which means I'm never, ever going to retire, but I'll just do it when I'm 80. <laughs> I know. I can't imagine that you will retire. I can't imagine what that would look like for either yeah. of us, really. How are we ever going to give it up, right? So yeah. that's my closing remark. There you <laughs> go. Else fails. Yes. Thank yeah. you for joining us today on the Bold Artist Podcast. We're so happy to have you all here. You can watch on the Bold School YouTube channel and listen on all available podcast apps particularly Spotify, Google, and Apple. We're right there if you search Bold Artist Podcast. Hit subscribe, follow us, leave a review. We're so happy to hear from you. The at Bold Artist Podcast on Instagram is a portal where you can send us messages. You can even send us a voice memo in the DM and ask us questions in person, like your own little podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Bye for now, everyone.